Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Kermit! Mm-hmm. What a pleasant surprise to see you and whoever you are. Are you kidding? We made like six movies together, three TV shows. We did love letters for a month at the Fisher Theater in Detroit. I want to say Gary? Sure, let's go with Gary. I- Hello, Internet. Today is May 12th, 2015, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk movies, TV, things we watch on screens in front of our faces. I'm your host, Malengo at Rambling Mango, and as usual, we have Sorg of Sorgatron Media. This guy right here, I'm so excited. I'm drinking from my Spider-Man mug of all the wake-up juice to keep me through this podcast day. <laughs> That's what you're calling it, wake-up juice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Our New York connection, Mad Mike. What up, everybody? I am back from my sojourn into Avengers land, and boy, are my mechanical robotic arms tired. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah. And the uh, the lovely don't mace with me, Ashley. Whoop, whoop, go? whoop, whoop. How goes it? I'm good. Back from my Tennessee travels. And here for a good while now, so no traveling in the future. Near future, anyway. That's good. Good old Tennessee. Did you ride any horses when you were in Tennessee? I feel like that's a perfect state for riding horses. No, oh. I did not, unfortunately. But I, I spent digress. a lot of time in the woods looking at trees, so it was fun. That's kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. So, The Muppets. The yeah! Muppets TV series. I had to defend it earlier because some people are saying they're just trying to be cool. That's what, what the Muppets have always tried to do. Yeah, really. <laughs> it's time to be real meta. It's time to prank the office. I, I mean, isn't that what they've always done? It yeah. is. It is. It's always been a commentary on whatever's going on in pop pop culture at the time. And I think this idea of the new Muppet show being the office, basically, is is pretty fun. And it is more adult oriented. We talked about mixed, mixed species relationships, so I'm sure this will be used in some kind of political platform. Um, oh no, sorry, that might be unbearable. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh jeez. Waka waka. That was uh, a good joke. By the like. way, um, if Fozzie's new catchphrase on the new more adult Muppets show is waka waka bitches, I will love it. For- <laughs> That'll be amazing. <laughs> Like if he decides his act is too is needs to be more blue and just start saying waka waka bitches. Mm, yes, they have my attention. <laughs> yeah, like the one character, the one puppet is like, I was in one of those specials. And like, Who are you? <laughs> so yeah. all of the originals are back? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, I'm very pumped about this. And I like the fact that there's a uh a replacement where Miss Piggy's like, oh, you've moved on. And then they uh-huh. another pig. And he's like, I don't know. I just have a thing with pigs. <laughs> I love yeah, it. this show's going to be freaking it. awesome. I'm yes. excited. When does it start? This. When does it start? It says Tuesdays this fall. Tuesdays this fall. Yeah, I'm a little upset because Tuesdays are already really, really crowded TV-wise for me. <laughs> It'll be on ABC. Hey. got to put everything on podcast day. Way to go, ABC. Yeah, yeah, seriously, right? Flash. Wait, is, wait a minute, is this going to be uh, like the this new movie release Eye Zombie day? and now Muppets? God damn it. Jeez. Wait, what else is on Tuesdays? Repeat that. Flash, oh. Eye Zombie, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and now Muppets. Okay. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> it is. It's like the uh, the comic day, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, uh, this is also from uh, the writer who did Big Bang Theory, or the co-creator. Uh, who did Big Ping Theory. So, I don't know. Big Ping Theory, although I did not love that show, it did have some funny lines. So, it'll be witty. I'm I'm happy. I'm excited. Sorg, what's going on in the box office? Well, looking at the numbers here, Age of Ultron, uh, well, it actually dropped 59%. Holy crap. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, to a paltry $77 million. 
Um, but I mean, that thing's barely going to make 1.5 billion. I know, I know, right? Uh, good luck to whoever had that on the movie draft. Anyways, uh, Hot Pursuit at 13, 14 ish million, and then it drops all the way down to Age of Adeline at uh, about uh, 9 million. Fur- Furious 7 still out there at 5 mil- five and a half million. Uh, let's see, this is four weeks they've been out there right no we have six weeks they've been out there and they've uh yeah they're they're doing okay they're they're, they're doing fun oh I, I need to point this out so that they're, they're six weeks in they're, and they're hitting uh 338 million dollars avengers in their second week is 313 wow yeah so yeah i i think they're doing pretty good so paul blart's still hanging in at number five at five million ew <laughs> so uh so i mean it's what we expected avengers still taking over yeah I mean, the, the worst part about uh, Paul Blart still being in it is that their production cost has now been covered and they've made twice as much money as it took to make that money, oh, that no. movie. So there will probably oh, be a Oh, yeah, movie. Paul Blart 3. Gonna happen. Maybe he'll be the security at Disney World. I was going to say, let, let's, let's already brainstorm about what next security job Paul Blart's going to have. I have a feeling it's going to be at a zoo. I, I was just going to say that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yes! Yes! Ashley we're, and I are telekinesing. We're connected. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Sorg, do you mm. think that... Okay, so this weekend, all of you guys can pitch in on this. So this weekend, uh, Pitch Perfect 2, which I am Woo! freaking going to camp out to go see. Yes! Um, and the Mad Max movie mm-hmm. comes out this weekend. Do you think these movies will be big enough to actually put a stomp in Avengers? Nope. Where it might not nope. be number one. No, nope. you guys don't think Nope, so? not even close. Not I, even close. Pitch even, Perfect 2, even, Pitch Perfect two is barely going to make $15 million. Yeah. The only thing that's going to take down Avengers is when Jurassic World comes out. And yep. that's, what, in two weeks? Yeah, three, something like well, that. about a month. A month. Exactly a month, actually. June 12th. Oh, it is a month? And June 12th. What about tomorrow, I'm Land? Super you don't think that'll take a hit? Or that movie looks so strange. I don't. I don't know how I feel about that. I one. think it's gonna end up like Earth to Echo. Honestly, I, I mean, I'm probably gonna go see. It I don't I think just, I, it just doesn't look appealing. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think there's either. enough enough Disney magic on it, like Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm. I mean, it's got George Clooney. Mm-hmm. You know, I think there's enough to it. People will go check it out, and if it's good, then people will keep going out. Oh yeah, that's so. true. Wow. So yeah, Avengers might just ride this wave for a while. For like a month. Yeah. Okay. You that sound disappointed, Malango. Yeah, because of my movie draft picks. Uh, well, well, who are you rooting for? for? Picking something right after Avengers. Oh, well, I didn't pick anything after Avengers, but I'm kind of surprised that Avengers didn't do better than it did the first week. So it's weird that Furious 7 is still beating it. I'm trying to see... Well, based on this, though, Avengers will overtake. I was going to say, Fury 7's been out a month longer. Yeah. Of so. course it's beating. They said but the, I, don't think, I don't think Avengers is going to make a, a billion domestically. Well, last yeah, weekend it was affected by the Pacquiao-Mayweather fight and the Kentucky mm-hmm. Derby. They said a lot mm-hmm. of people chose to stay in and watch sports that day and then go see a movie. Mm-hmm. So that affected its numbers, sports. too. Hmm? Who watches sports what? anymore? What is this word? Sports. Sports? I watched the Derby. I've been to the Derby, so I like the Derby. <laughs> I feel like the I couldn't mixed care less. Bag... I, I couldn't care less about boxing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the mixed bag of reviews after the week one is going to hurt it. Like, I think some people might just say, like, eh, we um, gotta go Malingo, Malingo, how many people saw Transformers 4? <laughs> ah, damn it. Mindless <laughs> fools. <sighs> That's a very good point. There are a lot of people that saw Transformers for. So I will move on on that sad note. Um, so there are some. I don't. Know, all right. So my personal opinion, Supergirl, I don't really care about. But I understand. Oh, stop. No, well, Malengo first. Supergirl back, got picked up for a full series. Mm-hmm. It's being done by a dudes who did Flash and Arrow, which those are great. Okay. I'm I in. expect Supergirl to be good too. I'm in those on that also, one. But those are also on a network that allows for a little bit more of that, like, I guess, comic creativity. This is on CBS. Yeah, but CBS is playing with house money. They're already the top network on TV. Supergirl is going to do nothing but help them, if anything. I mean, they... they they uh, gave odds, the odd couple another season. If nothing else, this is going to mean that they're going to have a bigger budget. 
And I don't think uh, DC is on a roll with those two other shows. CBS wants a piece of that pie. I don't think they're going to interfere too much. This becomes a production that just uh, happens to be on C- CBS. Nothing else. And I heard a rumor that they might have um, Supergirl's, you know, cousin show up on that show. And I heard they might also be the guy from Smallville, which <gasps> would blow my mind wide open. Now, I think they're just playing up on the. This That's... is my personal opinion. I think they're smartly playing up on the, on the hype of superhero movies and superhero content. But I don't think it's going to be a great show. But that's just me. The look of the outfit really kind of resembles, I thought, if I'm recalling correctly, what we're seeing in the movies as well. So Mm -hmm. it feels to me like it's going to be that kind of universe. But it would be nice if it kind of just crossed over with uh, the other other two series already out. (laughs) Ashley, did you you watch the Mindy Project at all? No, I have not. Uh, You are aware of... uh, Mindy K- Kaling? Kaling. Yeah. 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 So I think this is funny because I think, well, like I said in the pre show, I think she's an interesting writer. I liked her stuff on The Office. I read her book. I thought that was interesting. And I liked like the first or second joke that they play in this, in this uh, TV show. But I guess I am not with the 82% of the people who liked this show. I think it's good that Fox is chopping it. But the interesting part of the story is that it might actually get saved by Hulu. I don't know if you guys have heard the news about Hulu now becoming one identity. It is no longer Hulu Plus in Hulu. Mm-hmm. And I think they're trying to uh, play up on their we are going to compete against Netflix and and Amazon finally, and we will save television. You know, I feel like they've been doing this for a while quietly. Like, they've been introducing a lot of, you know, they've had the awesomes. Uh, we've had a lot of BBC stuff. I mean, I, I discovered things like uh, Whites and the and Misfits on there, which were both mm-hmm. fantastic series. And, uh, you know, and, and now I'm seeing Netflix kind of doing some of the same thing where they're picking up some BBC stuff. I just watched... Um, uh, Scrotal Recall, the first episode of that actually that, was, that popped up over on there, and that was hilarious. And actually, had one of the Misfits car- uh, uh, actresses in there. And uh, I, I like I like this idea of Hulu. You know, they become kind of a a second chance place for this kind of stuff. Uh, Yahoo is kind of doing the same thing with Community right now, and that's kind of my first thing. I'm, I'm really still surprised Yahoo picked it up over over Hulu. But uh, you know, I, I could see Mindy really. They push Mindy a lot on Hulu. If you're watching on there, I see the ads yeah. all the time. And I think it just becomes like for me, I, usually I cancel it during the summer because the only thing I'm watching on it is daily show and uh, that I can watch online. It just makes it a little easier to be able to do it on my TV. And, uh, but when we cut out, that's when we catch up with Netflix and, when all the series are off for the summer. Uh, but now I'm seeing so many shows pop up that I want to see that they're offering. Like I'd like to catch up on dead beats with the guy that used to be on Reaper uh, and uh, you know, a bunch of other stuff. It's really kind of making me maybe latch on for those three months. That I usually take off. Yeah, I mean, I personally, I don't, I've been off the Hulu bandwagon for a while. Right now, if it's not DVR, then I just watch it on on the computer or Mm -hmm. on Netflix or or whatever. So, I mean, I guess, I guess that's good for for Hulu trying to get into that, (laughs) trying to stay afloat in that game. But I don't know. Does anybody else have any opinion on this? Or shall we move on to something involving? Something involving lightsabers and Boba Fett in an original tell. What? Yeah, so... <laughs> is that a tease? I don't know. <laughs> what? Is so uh, the Star Wars anthology uh, will continue with a Boba Fett original tell, uh, I believe, movie. It's an origin story, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I I wonder if it's going to pick up where Attack of the Clones left off with young Boba Fett holding his dad's head in his hands because that's just kind of disturbing imagery. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, Star Wars has so much freaking content to go on. I, I'm a little excited about this because I like the Star Wars universe, but I feel like this is just like the same story as... Uh, as the Supergirl thing, where it's just playing up on the hype. 
we we're, we all know what's coming in December. Well, it's so. all it's all universe building. I mean that that's what they're doing. And if like episode seven has to be a good movie for people to get more excited about this. You know, I think it's also uh, Disney kind of looks at these properties and kind of looks at the people before and say, why didn't you do more movies? It mm-hmm. seems like ready. It, it's it's easy money at this point. You know, it's it's printing money at this point, and, and, and that that it hasn't been taken advantage of. Uh, we can call it maybe poor management on the production company beforehand. That you know, really kind of made the money the lazy way. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. and wasn't even that great at the licensing compared to look at things now with Marvel and, and Star Wars how it is everywhere. Uh, you know, if you're a fan of Star Wars or Marvel, you want more. And there's no reason not to, right? And now that there's not one guy at the top saying, "Well, I gotta write a script and I gotta do all this stuff," you know, I, I think it's 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 fine. So, I, I just I just want this movie to be done by Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> that would be great. I that that's all I want. That I don't know if Disney would think of that, but please, I know you're I know you're listening, Disney execs. I, I, know, you're, I know you're watching the show. Uh, Quentin, he's a good guy. He's a friend. Um, I think he'd do really great with it. Django Fett. Django Unchained. Yes. Django Fett Unchained. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. Um, yeah. Also, uh, I thought Rotten Tomato, they have this segment called Rotten Ideas of the Week. And, uh, I thought it was pretty funny. They had a segment on Marlon Wayne's uh, spoofs. Fifty Shades of Black. <laughs> oh, God. Can't, can't. oh my gosh! Eh, you can Just because one yourself. of the Wayans brothers was funny, that doesn't mean all of them should have jobs. <laughs> oh man! Oh, I have to watch this. I mean, I I kind of just want to watch it just to see like how bad it is. Isn't Fifty Shades of Grey a parody of itself to begin with? Listen. Let, yes. Yeah, uh, on YouTube I saw something called Fifty Shades of Buscemi. Of like, if, if I'm even <laughs> pronouncing it right, it's hysterical. It's yeah, it's Fifty okay. Shades of Steve Buscemi, or Bush, however you pronounce his last name. But it is hysterical. It, it made it one of my favorites. <laughs> that I would watch. That I would watch. Fifty Shades of Buscemi. Go, yeah, I'm in. I swear. I'm in. Look it up. Absolutely. In. Or up. Fifty Shades of Walking. If someone wants oh, to do no. that. Oh no! No, no. Totally in on that. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the uh, Wayne's quote: "Sex and comedy go hand in hand." I'm looking forward to having fun on this project. <laughs> so, <laughs> just, it's going to be so bad; it's going to be good. It sounds terrible. <laughs> it, it does not sound good at all. I don't know how you can be so excited for this and be down on Supergirl, the TV show. Because I, I mean, I've never been a Supergirl fan, and the way DC has been handling Superman. I feel like it will just continue. Ah, but see, you are confusing. It's not I know. like Marvel. Television. It's not like Marvel. I'm also confusing the lumping in television and the cinematic world. Because I will admit, Arrow is pretty good. I do like Flash. Mm-hmm. But I did not watch that original uh, whatever CW did with Superman. What was that? Smallville? Smallville? Smallville. I didn't watch Smallville. Smallville. The thing that ran for 10 seasons? Yeah, I didn't watch it. Yeah, it ran for 10 reasons, 10 seasons. It was pretty good for what we had at the time, but in in retrospect, it's a pretty good train wreck. So, you're not <laughs> you're missing a lot of teenage angst and drama with superpowers for about 8 seasons. Then Jeff Johns takes over and it kind of turns into a superhero show. So, yeah. Sword Sword. They did the they did the Teen Titans. Yeah, eventually, when I didn't care anymore. Season six. That's what got me back into it. But anyway, um, I, I have a question for you guys. Okay. It is. It's May Sweeps, and every show is gearing up toward their big finales. Some of them have already happened. Uh, what show's finale are you guys most excited about? I'm less excited for Flash because I realize it's not going to get to the point that, where I thought it would get to. I mean, oddly, I don't think I'm watching television because I know Game of Thrones is still going. <laughs> I was just going to say Game strong. of Thrones is the only one I'm looking forward yeah, to what, or not looking forward to because it'll be over. What ends other than the uh, Flash, Arrow, Gotham, <coughs> Shield stuff? Everything's so staggered these these days. And my counter question is, 
doesn't matter because something's going to be there for you to pick up. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm still excited about valid knowing... question, Mike. Valid question. Well, I mean, because Gotham se- season finale has happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, Big Bang Theory season finale has happened. Bad Mike, did you like the Gotham series finale? Yes, yes I really want to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody oh. that I know, because uh, I I actually fell off of it. Um, mm-hmm. just I don't blame you. Just because of their breaks, so it was kind of like, oh, I forgot Gotham's still on. So I'm gonna wrap it up. But my coworker told me to finish it because it gets good. <laughs> That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> <Aww. laughs> um, there are there's are there are certain parts that are fine. <clears throat> um, for some reason in the finale, they decided to jump ahead like six weeks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For some reason, there's a time jump in the finale because I guess oh, we don't have enough time to fill this with story. <laughs> I missed. Uh, wait, I missed that. Yeah, yeah, Sork. Okay. Yeah, the first scene when uh, Fish comes back up on into Gotham Pier. Oh, and they show, like six weeks later or something <laughs> that like that. Doesn't mean that. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll. Uh... They don't show us how we get not a big deal. Disagree, it's yeah. not a big deal. I disagree, but moving on. I wholeheartedly disagree with you because <laughs> none of none of what happened from point A to point B made sense. I actually lost track of the fish story, so I wasn't. This is sure. what I'm saying. <laughs> the what? whole finale was about her, so I'm like, that's that's huh. where that's where it lost me completely. Okay, um, yeah. All right, so I feel like I gotta finish it because it, it, it gets interesting. I, I, I like what they did with the serial killer that happened to be Nathan Petrelli from Heroes. I really Peter enjoyed Petrelli. that. Peter, I'm sorry, I'm Peter, yes. but uh, I, I thought that was really interesting. Uh, I like how they closed out a lot of the loose ends on Gotham. How you know we're kind of looking to the future for some of the guys we know are going to turn into back. You know the bad guys we know the low and love. Um, did you enjoy the Riddler turn? It, it it was okay, I guess. I mean, uh, nothing. The, no, the granted, only arc nothing. I've actually enjoyed on Gotham was the thing with um, the Pierre Petrelli guy with mm-hmm. the ogre. I think I called him. Yeah, the ogre. And they killed him. Right. The only compelling character that they've had on the show because Penguin, to me, he's just repeating himself now. Okay. Like he was great in the first couple up, ep- like first five or six episodes, and now he's just repeating everything. Okay. I would well, now grant. I don't think Gotham is going to be nearly as beloved as our arrows and our and our flashes are. But um, I, I think it's a pretty good show. I like what they're doing with it. And I want to see what happens in season two. Now, now they're maybe picking up a little bit of momentum. Oh yeah, because we're gonna have Victor Freeze and the Joker again, mm. all before <laughs> Batman. Like, you want to know how Gotham can fix itself for me? Uh, you want to know, Sword? Uh, show us Batman. It, it's very, no, it's very easy. Well, yes and no to, to what Lalingo said. Have Alfred be Batman. You know, I don't. No. I don't see how you could be cool with Smallville, but have a problem with Gotham. Because Smallville is not giving me baby versions of villains. Yeah, but they're giving you villains before there's a Superman, and sometimes oh, I'm they did sorry. give you. Baby Does he birds. still run fast, Sorg? Does he still have super strength? Does he still have heat vision? Does he still have freeze breath? Does he still have x-ray vision? He he is Superman. He just doesn't have a name yet. <laughs> He's still doing all of those things. He's still fighting those enemies. Yeah, once, again, once again, once again, I, I much with the Wayne movies is throwing books on a floor, Sorg. Much with the movies, much with anything else, you shouldn't look at this as anything else but an else worlds. This is not your Batman. This is a new version of Batman they're creating with tendencies towards the Batman world you're used to. And you need to take that in. I'm like, this isn't the Batman I read. This isn't how it happens in the comics. It's not going to be, Mike. And uh, I, and I don't but know. it's not Batman. Sorry. But it's also, at certain points, not a great show. So <laughs> that I'll I give you. And it, it has its problems. But I'm enjoying overall, and I like seeing where it's going. So, And a really interesting turn at the end, uh, I thought. But uh, we'll we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, if they didn't spoil it in every single commercial that's on. That's Fox. why I don't watch regular TV, Mike. <laughs> I know, but still, they should think <laughs> I, of their audience. Every time Mike Mike messages me on Tuesday, like, "Are you you excited for Flash tonight?" I'm like, "I have no idea what's happening on Flash tonight," and I'll find <laughs> out <laughs> Thursday <laughs> when I watch it. Okay, <laughs> I go in I go in cold to every Flash, and when I'm like, 
this is the one with Captain Cold. This is, they're doing the thing. And and like I have no idea. And I'm sure I would have been told about it for the entire seven plus days before I got a chance to watch it. I am okay not watching record TV but, in this state. But see, you know, I see the trailers and if it's a good show, they still have things that they haven't shown me in the trailers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like that that's my point. Like like also trailer trailer maker tra- trailer makers in general just kind of suck. Sometimes. Sometimes. It depends on the show. Anyways, Malengo, have we talked you into trying out The Last of Gotham? <laughs> oh, no, I was already going to watch The Last of Gotham. Oh, good, so good. I, I'm curious okay. your thoughts. Uh, yes, I will probably give my thoughts. Uh, oh, my gosh, my house is falling over. <laughs> I, will give my, I will give my thoughts uh, next week. Uh, but, yeah, I, I still have to finish um, the broad, broad, Broadway? No. Broad City? No, 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 no. The HBO show, I can't remember. Game of Thrones. Uh, Boardwalk? Boardwalk Empire. Oh. I was going to say, there's a lot of HBO shows. Yeah, really. Entourage? Yeah. I don't know. Entourage! Yes! I'm so pumped for Entourage. <laughs> Sorg, you need to watch Entourage. That's another, pl- that's another movie I'm going to camp out for. No, because I'm busy, of course, uh, as as noted, I'm busy with right now Halt and Catch Fire. And, uh, and now uh, S- Scrotal Recall. Uh, is apparently on my list to watch. Did so. you say total recall? No, scrotal recall. The story uh, is that he gets chlamydia and has to uh, go tell everybody, and it flashes back to his relationships with uh, with each woman. What? That just sounds like an alternate version of How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could see that, but without as much of a long game. It's kind of <laughs> like each episode is an entire series of How I Met Your Mother. I was just going to say each episode is just Barney. <laughs> it was interesting. It was. It, it was. I, I'm an epi- I, I watched an episode. There's like ten of them. They're like 22 minutes. I, I needed something short to watch before Raw yesterday, so now, it works. Now, Sorg, I have a question. Mm. Was an alternate title for Scrotal Recall just make it clap? It could have been. It really could have been. <laughs> I'm sure that joke uh, is going to pop up if it hasn't already. Sure it's British. It it's uh, it's British, geez. so it makes it classy automatically. Um, also, like I said, halt, catch fire. I'm up to season or uh, episode five. I, and uh, I like it. It's uh, very timey and very geeky and and still kind of uh, dirty and drama-y, I guess. A lot, of, a lot of 80s punk music, so I'm, I'm really kind of enjoying that. Uh, I recommend it. Uh, first season, 10 episodes is on uh, uh, Netflix right now, and I think it's coming back on the May 31st, perhaps. So uh, check that out, catch up, and uh, check out the series. So that's all I got. That's all you got, huh? Mm-hmm. Ashley, let's geek out about Game of Thrones. Let's do it. Let's do it. You start. Dragons are back. Oh, yes. I'm so excited. And stone people. I was going to say, what's up with these stone men? I need to, um, I need to know I'm more about sure this. That's the gritty reboot of the Fantastic Four. <laughs> hey, it's Game of Thrones time, okay? No, I know, and I've been watching Game of Thrones, and honestly, I haven't been that impressed with this season. You weren't impressed it- by the fourth episode? Nope. No, no, the, oh gosh, I love that episode. I, the, the one I, last week, or the, this? yeah, last week's episode. Oh uh, yeah. I don't care enough about those characters to really be sad about what happened. What characters are you like wanting to see more of? Tyrion. Yeah. Arya. Like I like the Sansa stuff. I think that's really good. I like where her story is going. I think, I think, I think she's. I think she has much more of a of a bigger play this season, as does Cersei. Um, I think Daenerys. I would like to see her have a bigger role this year. Um, mm-hmm. I haven't really noticed that too much, but um, Arya. Yeah, I think her role's going to get bigger as time goes on. Because well, the thing is, I'm so bored by Jon Snow. See, I'm getting more interested in Jon Snow. I was going to say, he's another one who seems to be, you know, coming into his own a little bit more. I'm seconding the Jon Snow thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I like, overall, I like his story and where it's going. Right. Um, I also, I, I enjoyed um, Crazy Guy that, that uh, I'm sorry, I'm really bad with names on this show. But uh, 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 Crazy, which one? Crazy <laughs> Guy that was taking the one Lannister apart piece by piece and turn him into a dog, basically. Uh, oh, Ramsey. Yeah, Ramsey, yeah, Ramsey yes. Bolton. Yeah. Partly, Ramsey Bolton. Partly because, again, another sick. another guy from from Misfits that I enjoyed. And yeah. he was he was just such an interesting, sadistic character. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and he isn't as, well, he kind of is right now, but uh, but no, he's he's been a lot of fun. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's why. That's why. Like, I'm actually frightened for Sansa. <laughs> like that. That's probably the most intriguing story for me so far this season. It is, yeah, I would agree. I would agree on that. But no, I think she's. I think she's developing um, more power as she goes along. I don't know. I, I don't think she's the weak, timid character that she used to be when she was in King's Landing. I think she. Um, she's starting to grow into her own now. I mean, when she found Theon in the kennel. And she just turned around. I mean, when she's as she's walking out of there, you can just tell that there's a force over her. You know, like, mm-hmm. don't mess with me. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I think that there's uh, there's something interesting about her now. I, I didn't like her at first, but I'm liking her more and more. But I, I want to know what's happening with Arya, like, because it seems like I don't know this. The show feels very cluttered to me sometimes it does yeah it's I'm, I'm wondering how are they going to catch up with all of these storylines all of these little things that they mm-hmm. do every, like even with with jorah now and I, getting touched by the stone man what's that going to lead I had i has actually gotten this twitter conversation a little bit with uh mikey for uh, local here on kiss mikey and big bob mm. uh and and we were he was just we we're just going on about like like you i need a map to figure out what's oh, yeah. going on and i was like actually uh, last season or the season before i was watching on the xbox and you can get the smart glass app and it actually brings mm. up a map and information and if something pops up on a new scene and actually takes you to a, you can click a thing it'll pause it and take you to a flashback clip about why this is important from oh. before to oh that's a guy that did the thing you know i'm the guy that needs that <laughs> no, very, yeah, I mean, very <laughs> much so i'm the guy that needs that and uh it, it's really handy and you do you do need like a series guide map interactive something or other i and and and, and i just wish i had something like that for my chromecast or my uh fire tv that did the exact same thing right so yeah because ultimately there are three major storylines right so danny needs to get back to westeros Something mm-hmm. is going to happen with the White Walkers. And then I would say another one is the Starks need to get revenge on the Lannisters <laughs> or on the South. So I think those are the main storylines, but they're kind of getting muddled with all of these little side stories that are happening. And I'm I wondering... don't even know if I'd consider a white, the White Walkers a main storyline. Oh, I no. We haven't I seen do. one in like three years. I know, but it's 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 going to be part of it. It has to be. It has to be part of its climax. <laughs> it, was, it was such a big tease. I'm just coming. blaming climate change at this point that the White Walkers... But, but, but they have, they have a bigger... It's a bigger conversation piece this season so far. I th- you haven't seen them yet, but they're they're more in conversation than they were. I don't think they were mentioned at all. Is that last like, year. oh hey, you killed one of them? Yeah. You did a thing. That was two seasons ago, but okay, you know, yeah, I'm the guy that did the thing with the piece of metal, and and and, yeah. and there yeah, it is. But, yeah, but now winter is really coming. <laughs> Just saying. Sure, it is. It's it's always coming. I think winter's. Well, been, no, I think it's. Really, I, I think it really is this time. <laughs> I think winter's been faking it this whole time. <laughs> Never I think it. Anymore. Shut up. <laughs> it's always going to be autumn. It's a mild drizzle, oh, to be honest. Oh, man. Yeah, so very mild with the If Jon Snow water. says it's coming, it's coming. I'm just saying. Just because he has snow in his last name doesn't mean he knows when winter's coming. <laughs> He's like a forecaster. He can tell these things. Oh, great. Jon Snow's a meteorologist. I'm not, I'm not trusting him. You know why? He, Every single person on that show tells me he doesn't know a damn thing. <laughs> he is the John Snow is the finest meteorologist in all of Westeros. You know John nothing, Snow, John Snow. Don't trust John Snow. His name. It gone rain. Winter's coming. I always liked John Snow's character. <laughs> oh but I, I liked it best last. I think it was two episodes ago when he uh, cuts off the dude's head. And the F- HBO does a pretty good uh, behind the scenes doc- like thing at the yeah, end. Yeah, and inside the episode, that's new this year. Yeah, yeah I, I like that. They're tacked on to like every viewing. Right, Girl, of, of girl, girls did that too. Did they? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I like that. It gives you more insight. And, and kind of a nice reminder because maybe you didn't like go find that uh, on 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 their app or whatever. So it, it, it's pretty nice. I always forget about it. <laughs> It's like, oh, there's more stuff. So I'm used to just, you know, bottoming out and I, I go queue up some uh, Silicon Valley, you know, which I didn't get to this week. So. I started to watch that, too, which is it's good. It's mm-hmm. funny. I like it. Mm-hmm. I've watched a What's few episodes. Know? Silicon Valley. Oh, yeah. uh, um, I, um, watch, I watch Silicon Valley just so that I'm not depressed at the end of Game of Thrones being over. Oh, One of yeah, the right. big things with Silicon Valley was the discussion is that like there was no proper female uh, representation in there. Mm. And then last week's episode brought it and had a lot of fun with it (laughs) so sorg this week's episode yes oh my god so good (laughs) so so good wait wait wait. is the Um, the girl they hired still there wait you're you're referencing the ferret episode right 
Yes. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, there's a fairy my god, involved. sword. Um, without spoiling, will it? Uh, no, I can't talk. Without I don't know what to say. The monkeys won't do. That's all I'm gonna say. The monkeys won't. Do. The monkeys won't do. <laughs> Oh, yep, geez. sword. Just uh, you'll you'll have to watch. Um, cancel the awesome my, my cast. Fa- I need to go watch was, this. Uh, Mad Mike, my favorite is. Wait, you speak German? Yep, uh, no. that too. Like, <laughs> oh my god, how, how many more things can we say? To uh, damn it! I have to watch it. The thing is, I have to watch it. If anything good happened on Silicon Valley, I have to watch it before I I, I watch my my Wednesday podcast because they tend to make these inside references to stuff happen on Silicon Valley because it's a very inside Silicon Valley geeky kind of podcast. Oh, oh man! And I was like, I got to keep up with this. I really got to keep up on this. Yeah, Sorg, this episode this week's was really. <laughs> this is although this is the same podcast this week in Google. They also had ongoing things about Glee fandom and Chipotle. So. Mm-hmm. Go. That's where I learned. Of- even, uh, I'm gonna have to listen to that to see how they even bring that together. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I can see not it. all at the same time. I can see it. Both make you want to crap your pants. I understand. Oh, <laughs> wow! Man. I remember when Glee was good, and I don't know what you're getting at Chipotle, but mm. it's Mexican food. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so I know Ashley watched this, and I wanna I want to talk about it real quick. It follows. So you saw it. So I saw it. Sex okay. TV. And if I had saw, if I had seen that when I was a teenager, I would say no sex ever. <laughs> he wouldn't have a kid right now. I would not I would trust anybody. Uh, what'd you think? Um. So the soundtrack definitely adds a fear factor to yeah. it. I thought. I thought that it was scored pretty well. It has well. a great score. It's like a mix between Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, that's what I. Yeah, that's what I would say. Um, some of the logic in it was kind of just like, okay, why would you go to the pool? Like, what was the plan behind that? I hadn't. Yeah, I was so lost in that scene. But um, the way it ended with that last shot, I had to rewatch it twice and be like, "Holy crap!" There's yeah. You see so, it, what you see it following them. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's an interesting, it was an interesting, it's an interesting <laughs> horror movie, I guess. What do we call it? Horror? It's like pop culture. Horror, horror yeah. yeah. It was yeah. good. It was okay. I, I think I wouldn't, like, I don't know though. Like, you yeah. saw it in theater. I don't think I would have seen it on the big screen. I mean, I didn't see it on the big screen, obviously. <laughs> but I think I would wait so to wait, see this one. How did you see it then? I magic. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, but yeah, I think I would wait to see this at Redbox or something. Yeah. No, it, it's definitely a good Redbox movie. Um, With a good sound system. Yes. Yes. I mean, and I think there's going to be another one because I think it's going to um, discuss the origin of the story more and how this started because they didn't go into that at all. See, is, but, a, is it going to be called It Still Follows or... <laughs> It will follow. Okay. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, there, there's always the uh, there, there are a couple different ways they could go. Where you know the what is it, the last person dies, and then it just goes in the reverse order. So mm-hmm. they could, I guess, do a prequel to just I don't know. There, there are a lot of ways that could go. That'd yeah. Be interesting. So, so there's retroactive sexing haunting happening. I don't know if I call it retroactive. Basically. Some demon thing is basically really upset about their first experience with sex and wants to kill <laughs> wants to kill anybody there forth after. Somebody got screwed over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'd watch a sequel called that. <laughs> screwed it's over is a sequel to It Follows. Like compared to like the ring where I felt like we uh. got like a lot of the the gist behind it in the first movie. And then they just kind of went crazy with, we're going to explain where the ring came from in like the second one. It's like, I don't know. Maybe maybe it should just be left alone. Like, I don't know if we need to see where yeah, that's true. this crazy demon person came from. But anyway, were you, Ashley, are you watching anything else on television? I started watching Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Yes. Uh, and so I've, I've been watching, I've, uh, maybe like 10 episodes I saw. So I okay. just, I, I was sort of binge watching that on Saturday. I like it. It's uh, it's better than I thought it was going to be. Very catchy theme song. Um, yes. Ashley, Ashley, I have a very important question for you about yeah. Kimmy Schmidt. 
Have you caught the Hulkamania? The Hulkamania. She just she just I started don't... though. <laughs> I don't think she's that far. Oh, okay. I thought no, I don't think I don't think it. I did. You okay. you make sure you tweet us when you catch the Hulkamania, Hulk okay? Yes. okay? Absolutely. <laughs> trying to think. What episode is it? I, I, I think it's a lot. It's, it's like halfway through the series, what? the first one, I, I got think. got pretty far. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, she got up to episode it's 10. Not some, so. it's, not, oh. it's, it's not a subtle thing, right? Like, I would no, it's, it right not a, it's not a subtle thing. Okay. I don't think anything on that show is really that subtle. <laughs> no. That's no. true. That's true. The wall of pictures, though, in, in the, yes. in, in, in the uh, gay help place was kind of subtle. You had to, you kind of kind of had to look for it. So. <laughs> uh, what about you, Med Mike? Is there anything that you are watching that we did not talk about? Um, actually, I started watching Bob's Burgers. Hmm. Oh, and it's huh? a recommendation from my sister, and it's freaking hilarious. Yeah, it's pretty. That's great. all you can say. It's pretty <laughs> great. It's pretty great. Um, I kind of wish there was a crawl space in my house now. Um, I've only watched like four episodes, but I'm probably going to be binge watching it for a long time now. So yeah. yeah, super good. Super funny. That's the one show that Hulu actually messed up for me. So I don't know why I didn't just put it on my DVR because it's freaking hilarious. Well, it's on Netflix. Uh, but I'm caught up with all of this. Oh, okay. So, uh, what about you, Sorg? Oh, it's everything I had. Is it? <laughs> Oh, yes, you did talk about everything you watched. Pretty sure. Cool. So uh, before we head out, I'm just going to say I'm hungry. Where's a good place to get pizza? Slice on Broadway. Check, check them out at sliceonbroadway.com. Our locations in Carnegie, PA, down on Main Street, and down here up on the tracks in Beachview in the south hills of Pittsburgh. Great stuff. Uh, uh, talking with uh, uh, Rico actually about doing something fun here in the in near future. Uh, but go check them out. It's, uh, it's yummy stuff. It's feeding the guests. And we got so many guests. I think we might have somebody in studio for about every show tonight. And we do five podcasts Ooh. here on podcast podcast night so thanks to them check them out pgh underscore slice on the twitters and slice on broadway on facebook and instagram malengo nice. where can we uh find you mad mike you can find me on the twitter machines at mad mike 4883 and i'm also on the wrestling mayhem show and if you want to hear more about geeky things check out panel riot with sorgatron media's friend dj lunchbox how do you, how do you, never mind. I'm not going to that. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Actually, ah. if I, if I want to tweet you Twitter stuff, where should I go to do that? Do it at don't mace with me. Thank you. Or else you'll get mace. <laughs> also from our chat room, which you can join us here every uh, uh, Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Juggalo John actually shared with us, since we were talking about Star Wars and Django or uh, Boba Unchained or something, there was actually a Django <laughs> Unchained kind of mashup video. It looks like somebody did uh, from Panels on Pages. So uh, we'll, we'll tweet that out. I'll pour that on the uh, Brambling Movie Minute Facebook uh, here in a moment so you guys can check that out as well. Yeah, I'm excited about that. I'm I kind of want to watch that right now. All right, uh, yes, yeah, so you can find me at, on Twitter at Rambling Mango, and um, definitely check out our website, uh, Time to Ramble. At some point, Ashley will write something <laughs> on there, and we can talk about it then. <laughs> at some point, no pressure. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this week's Rambling Movie Minute. Thanks for hanging out with us, and until next week, have a Rambling Movie Weekend. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net.